I read Atlas Shrugged when I was already on board. I, I wish I could say it was free will. I think I was just a lefty who had my eyes open, and again and again I was finally mugged by reality and <laughs> had, had to see the truth. What an experience of, oh my God, how could she know this then and say it so well so many years ago? How did you discover Atlas Shrug, and why did that matter? My father started a sporting goods store about 25 years ago, and I, I, I saw him go through the trials and tribulations of running a business, and I helped him after hours cleaning tools, cleaning pawn merchandise, etc., um, and came to the ideas through the likes of Henry Hazlitt. I read Economics in One Lesson when I believe I was 14 or 15, and it was within that next year that I'd read uh, Atlas Shrug. So I was actually in high school, um, and being in high school, reading Atlas Shrug, Economics in One Lesson, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of college students here. You're weird when you do it in college. You're bizarre when you do it in high school. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I've been a long-term uh, libertarian, I guess you could say, an objectivist uh, proper. I think the, uh, what, it, what is an objectivist? Well, it's a libertarian applied, right? It's someone who's actually involved in business and understands the objective reality. Um, and, and Rand definitely communicated that in a way that was unique and effective to me, but also my peers. Uh, I can talk Atlas Shrugged a lot easier than I can. Uh, some Austrian economic principles like subjective theory of value or praxeology or catalactics. I think Rand does a very good job of articulating that. My mother was a ravenous reader, and so she'd read Fountainhead and had Atlas Shrugged laying around the, the house, and I think it was one, one Christmas vacation that, uh, during college that I picked it up, and, and it was obviously taken by, you know, just uh, overcome with it, really. I, I remember, you know, those what, 50-page, 75-page soliloquies by John Galton when they were over. He goes, oh, no, I, I wanted him to keep going. Um, you know, J John, you, you, you had mentioned, you know, it's, it's also the first, what, 1,100-page book that you go, I can't believe it's over. It is amazing how prophetic Ayn Rand really was. You take, you take a look at something called the Employee Free Choice Act. Or how about the reason I ran the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act? I mean, it's just, it's just eerie in terms of how, how incredibly prophetic she really was. And we are living, we are living uh, right now, Atlas Shrugged, and it's, it's sad. A teammate on the, on the basketball team in, in college, he and I were having an argument. I was a devout Catholic and a, and a staunch, you know, sort of big government Republican. And I said that communism is good in theory, but it doesn't work in practice. And, and he said... Communism is the most immoral political system ever conceived. And uh, six or seven hours later, the sun came up, and he said, you know, you're so stubborn and so effing ignorant that uh, I, am, I am never going to speak with you about these subjects until you read these books. And he gave me Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal, uh, and he gave me a lot of Hazlitt and Bastiat and others, and that's how... It took me a little while, but uh, not too long till I got it. So. And Jay, this was a college student who was that educated? Where did he get this? This, um, if you can imagine, on the basketball team at the University of Texas, to actually have run across uh, someone who thought that way, it's pretty, pretty extraordinary. And I look back, I look back on that, on that as, uh, as giving me great hope that these ideas can spread. They're just so powerful that they that they capture you when they get you. I was. Uh, introduced to Ayn Rand much later um, than I was introduced to, if I, if you will, objectivism type philosophies, um, and so it was probably in my 40s before I actually was uh, read Atlas Shrugged, and I think I found that Atlas Shrugged just validated so many of the things that I'd been taught as a young man by my father. Um, I, I thought I'd share something. My father wrote um, as it's now part of what's called the McDermott philosophy, which is uh, embraced by our whole company, he wrote this about the same time as Atlas Shrugged was published. And it says, we believe in the supreme worth of the individual and the dignity of his or her work for the benefit of us all. We will pursue the opportunities so people, or sorry, for people to fulfill satisfactorily their own personal objectives and ambitions and reward them in, propor in proportion toward achieving the corporate objectives. And, you know, that's about as objectivist a, a type of statement that was written in uh, the late 50s, as, as I can imagine. So I'm proud to have been introduced to the formal 
part of objectivism uh, much later than that, but it's certainly uh, something that I had embraced far before then. I, I was uh, 15, and I was reading, this is 1960, and I was reading Playboy, and if you know those letters to the sort of the advisor, and, and they like to give quotes by famous people, so they quoted a, um, a book called Maxims by La roche -Gaffaut. And he's a, if you ever read uh, Maxims or Aphorisms, they're cute little sayings, and I really like this, and I went to the bookstore to buy a book <clears throat> by this... Uh, author La roche who wrote in the late 1500s. Anyway, next to R, yeah, I had to go to R here, not L. So I go to R and I see uh, the book called The Virtue of Selfishness by Ayn Rand. And I said, well, that's odd. I, why is that good, this self-virtue? So I had a, I picked up the book, I flipped through it, and then I saw Nathaniel Brandon's chapter on the psychology of pleasure, which kind of was the reason I went to that store because of this, because of Playboy. <clears throat> so th th that actually, <clears throat> that, <laughs> that, that actually made me buy that book. And <clears throat> I, I really didn't get to Atlas Shrugged until I was early 20s, maybe 21, 22. But it took me a while to read this little book called The Virtu Virtue of Selfishness. And I had seen Atlas Shrugged somewhere, maybe I was 18, but it was six times the size. And I said, Jesus, understanding one of these chapters when I was 15 was difficult. But what, what really got me was the trader principle. So I got into trading, and part of how I got into trading was the love of the paragraph she wrote about the trader principle, that you don't take anything unless you earn it and it was, you have to read it, I don't want to butcher the, the, the paraphrasing of it.